Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Usama Fayyad, and my co-speaker is Hamid Hamuchu. And uh, we'll be talking about a uh, topic of big controversy that we're trying to also shed some lights on and give the context for why this topic has been confusing a lot of people. Uh, I'll, I'll give a little bit of background about myself and then Hamid will talk about himself when he uh, picks up on the second part of the talk. Um, I've been in AI and machine learning for a long time, did my PhD in it, uh, worked at NASA JPL, worked at uh, Microsoft, did a couple of startups, the second of which got uh, acquired by Yahoo, uh, became the first chief data officer, uh, actually anywhere, uh, in 2004. And, uh, that title, when we started, started out as a joke, but I guess the industry took it very seriously. Uh, so there's a lot of the chief data officers now. Um, after Yahoo, I started a company called Open Insights, which was my way of kind of working with Microsoft uh, without going back as an employee. And uh, in the interim, I took a, a, a slight break in 2000. 13 to 16, I went to London and was the global chief data officer at Barclays Bank. Uh, came back to Open Insights afterwards. So a lot of uh, involvement also with the uh, data science, data mining, and uh, knowledge discovery in databases communities. Uh, with a lot of, you know, used to write a lot of papers in my past, and now I do a lot of uh, kind of figuring out what the field needs and how to help it. So that's about me. Um, what we want to talk about is this topic of data science. So if you're about to board a uh, commercial airliner, uh, do you want to board an uh, airplane piloted by him or by these guys, right? And how, how do you know the difference, right? How do you know who is it that you can trust, right? Similarly, if you're about to you know, go through surgery, uh, you know, how do you make sure that this is done by somebody who's qualified and not somebody who's gonna mess you up? <clears throat> so here's the question. Do you think data is equally important? Do you think that very bad things can happen uh, when people who are not qualified are analyzing your data as an organization, as a company, as a government, what have you? Uh, we think <clears throat> there can be very equally bad consequences uh, in this new world where data is so important and often is kind of the only way to understand what's going on, uh, especially when you talk about scale and operating at scale and, and dealing with, with uh, large data sets and large dimensions, which humans are uh, not so great at doing. So it's particularly important that the people and organizations doing this be doing it with people who know what they're doing. And part of the reason we're doing the effort we're talking about is we notice this pattern, and we'll talk about it a lot, which is a lot of people like to claim they are data scientists. They primarily like to claim they're data scientists because data scientists get paid a lot of money, and we'll talk about the context for that and all this. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are not necessarily qualified, and many organizations don't know how to tell the difference. So there's a real problem there, and we'll try to quantify that. So let's start with the context. Right, the, the hype is still out there. It started quite a while ago uh, with, with the old article by uh, DJ Patil and, and uh, da Thomas Davenport, where data scientist was declared the sexiest job of the 21st century continued on, and by the way, you know, there's, there's reality to it, because if you look at things like Glassdoor, which runs surveys, 2016, 17, 18, and 19, keeps coming out to be the best job to have, both from a, a compensation perspective and a quality of life perspective. Uh, actually, often when I look at these surveys, I ask the question, what are the worst jobs to have. And uh, care to guess what the worst job to have 
Actually, this was 2016 and 2018. What do you think it was? Professional jobs. What's that? Federal government. Federal government. No, actually, it turned out to be tax accountant for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, so it, you know, it's getting a lot of attention. A lot of people talk about it, and a lot of people are interested. Now, you look at things like um, Kaggle, and you say, how many people are kind of analytics professionals who belong to Kaggle? And the growth rate has truly been astounding, right? And every year I look at it and I say, well, it's not going to grow much more the next year, right? We must have saturated. I actually said that in 2016. I said that in 2017. And I'm not going to say anything in 2018, because <laughs> it just keeps going. And I don't know where these numbers are coming from. Now, to go to Kaggle, you have to have something to do with analytics. You can't be just any random individual, right? You, you're trying to do something serious with analytics. You're trying to compete. You're trying to look at results, et cetera. So it's, it's not a bad indicator, right? Uh, we did another study where we went on LinkedIn, and we kind of looked up uh, members by capability targeting, right? So we listed all these capabilities on the left uh, to kind of say how many people claim this capability. Uh, and we got something like 26 million. Uh, by the way, this is up from a year and a half ago or more where it was, you know, a lot less. So it, it's growing dramatically. Um, and if you go by title targeting, right, people who call themselves data scientists, analysts, etc., listed here again, and we'll, we'll share, we'll make the slides available, uh, about a million plus members, right? So a significant community. Now you'd think this is loose research or, you know, we're overestimating or what have you. Uh, by the way, also LinkedIn, you look for groups. I mean, some of these groups are questionable, but there's a lot of groups here that are kind of above 100,000 uh, people. All of these are kind of very, very related to uh, <coughs> analytics and data science. So we asked the question, how many data scientists are in the world, right? I actually was curious about this. And <coughs> according to the co-founder and CEO of, of Kaggle at the time, this is, I think, before the acquisition by Google, um, he estimated it was about between 1.5 and 3 million, right? So my, my first reaction was like, wow, that's quite a range. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, 100% variance, if you like. Um, <clears throat> but what's interesting is if you dig in deeper in the statistics, and, and again, the ranges are, are wide because people don't quite know, right? But these, these statistics are coming from interesting places. 200,000 to 700,000 new grads in the field uh, in, in the global job market. Uh, in the US, um, we there's belief, I think this is IBM, uh, U.S. data professional will increase to 2.72 million openings by 2020. Openings, right? This is not people. These are job openings. And annual demand for fast-growing new roles, data scientists, developers, and engineers in the U.S. will reach about 700,000 openings per year, right? Um, despite this, there is still a skills shortage. Uh, the top emerging jobs kind of by, by growing numbers. Uh, the top one is machine learning engineer. That's growing nine times over a smaller base. Data scientist is growing about six times over a pretty large base. Uh, in terms of uh, estimates, McKinsey forecasted the US could face a shortage of 150K to 190K people with deep analytics skills by 2018. I usually don't have a very high opinion of McKinsey research, but I will tell you, LinkedIn in 2018 did its own separate research to verify it and came up with 151K. So McKinsey was right on in this case, right? Uh, again, this is, this is the shortage, right? This is basically how many more open positions there are than candidates available for these positions. So it's pretty scary stuff when in the U.S. you have something like 150K shortage. 
this is a, a recent uh, study put out by, uh, oh, this is Quant Crunch. Uh, I found it interesting because they kind of break down the two dimensions by projected growth versus hardness to fill. And what is interesting is data scientist is top right corner, right? So it's definitely, you know, according to a lot of communities, the, the hardest kind of role to find, the hardest role to, to fill out there. Um, we mentioned this before, the 150K plus shortage. Remember, this is 150K more job listings than there are candidates looking for those jobs, right? Uh, year on year increase is 2X. And uh, big data and analytics is the scarcest skill, according to KPMG CIO survey. Um, difficulties in hiring and matching, 82% of data scientists posting require three plus years prior work experience, which means it's a, it's a higher bar than normal. Uh, HR recruiters do a lot of uh, pre-screening and cutoff, et cetera. And the recruitment processes are lengthy. We'll talk about those, and we'll talk about the, the problem uh, posed by these. So what we have is basically unmet demand, right, and difficulty to actually fill those positions, right, which explains these, these gaps that are actually growing. Now, let's talk a little bit about the confusion, right? So here are three data scientists in the same company. I think these are all at Facebook. So these are three data scientists in the same company. And if you look at how they describe themselves in terms of their background, right? The educational background almost has nothing to do with each other. One is a PhD in optimization. Another one is a business grad. Another one is a kind of a mix between engineering and business. And when you look at their... Uh, Skills, there's, there's almost no intersection in what they declare as their skills, right? Some of them is much more toward programming, some much more toward analytics, etc. It gets even more confusing when you look at same position across different companies, right? And you'll find uh, kind of a very similar pattern where educational background, total huge variance, right, it's for the same title, and the skills they list, Huge variance, right? When you look at them individually, you probably say, well, why, why should these two people be called the same thing, right? Um, postings are a similar problem. So this was candidates talking about themselves. If you look at job postings, and we've done a lot of research on these, so these are three job uh, postings for the same job title, data scientist versus data analyst. And as you read them, you will see that they're completely different, right? Uh, in terms of what they ask for in qualifications, uh, in terms of how they describe the role, et cetera, right? So again, probably confusion by the people who are writing the job descriptions and calling for those job skills. Um, I like this, we did a lot of research and interviews, and Hamid will talk about these and, and go into the details of some of the survey results. But there was one quote I really liked about a, a, a job candidate who interviewed for several uh, openings for a, 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 jo a, a data scientist job. So he basically says in most interviews, you know, they've asked me to write pseudocode like Python. Uh, some ask some product specific questions, write SQL, blah, 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 right? And then he said beyond that, there was li very little in common, right? It varied from, uh, you know, they're all all day affairs. So this is how much time you're spending on it. Back-to-back uh, -back meetings, uh, intensive, etc. Two, oh, I just met with a CTO and, and he or she interviewed me very quickly and kind of assessed, right? So this is one candidate going to the next job, describing, in this case, his, uh, uh, his uh, experience. And he says, basically, sort of it goes all the way from social culture component, ranging from formal interviews with non-technical people to kind of happy hours is what he called them. Uh, so again, that tells you companies don't actually know what to interview for. Uh, what about educational programs, right? And this is, this is growing also super fast. So now there's 250 programs in universities that offer graduate degrees in data science. And if you look at the, it's, and that's been a, a very a growing area, something I like. However, 
If you look at the curriculum, right, and you see the description and how they prepare you, they, again, you see the same pattern, almost has nothing to do with each other, right? The way they, you know, what they teach, what they emphasize, completely different programs. So this is Carnegie Mellon versus Columbia University. Uh, this is uh, BYU-Idaho versus Winona State, right? And again, some, you know, emphasize databases and programming, some emphasize only statistics, some emphasize kind of management, etc. So you look at the syllabuses themselves and, and you say, oh, well, this is different. How do I know, right? Online certificates, same kind of problem, right? Udacity on the left, Coursera on the right, and you can immediately tell the differences, right? And you're, you're actually signing up for data science in both. Uh, so as a result of this confusion, basically, um, IBM did a study where they said um, that average data science job stays open five days longer uh, on average than a typical kind of technical engineering job. Um, and 10% um, of data scientists changed or began a new role in the last 90 days, right? So that's a function of both high churn but also of high growth, right? Uh, the, um, what this tells you, if you look at the churn rates, right? Compare a data scientist, ML engineer, versus a data analyst or a statistician, or a software engineer or a sales rep or an accountant. And you can see how much more the churn rate is, right? Almost two to four times, depending on what you're comparing against in terms of churn. If you turn that into numbers, this is where it gets scary. This is why it kind of stops being funny and it becomes a serious cost. Um, if you look at the hiring process, and we've done some math, right, and I'm, I've given you the lower bounds here, we came up with larger numbers, but effectively wasted time during recruitment. So basically these are companies interviewing and screening candidates who have nothing to do with the position. We came with an estimate, it's, it's a bit larger, but we think 300 million is a good conservative lower bound on the total loss to the economy in the, in the US of doing these interviews. Um, the wasted cost and time with the wrong hires, of course, when you land on the wrong hire, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Uh, and that's lower bounded at 600 million uh, a year. And in terms of time, it's about 1,200 years of kind of work, work time wasted uh, of people hiring the wrong person and getting rid of the person, et cetera. So the numbers are big. Uh, and if you say, uh, well, what are the root causes of this confusion? And we're going to quantify these as we go through the survey results. Some of these are pretty interesting. The first one, lack of mentors, right? 71% of direct managers lack knowledge to help technical development. Okay, this is another word, a candidate saying, my manager doesn't get what data science is, right? That's another way of saying it. Um, proof of expertise, right, is another one. Uh, they're self-claimed experts. I'm a data scientist. Take it or leave it, right? Believe me. Step aside, whatever it is. Um, too many options, right? When you, and then this is, this column on the right is about, sorry, on the left is candidates. Column on the right is companies, right? Uh, so basically, you can't really blame them because they, can, they have so many choices of different programs that they can kind of squeeze themselves into a combination of some. Uh, if you look on the company side, what's one of my favorite ones? Uh, ineffective selection, right? The hiring managers don't believe the recruiters get it, so we end up with wrong job descriptions, wrong candidates being sourced, etc. cetera. And, uh, Culture gap was another big one. So this is people inside the company telling you, well, my company doesn't really believe that AI and machine learning have a role to play here. So it's like, you know, we're, we're ill uh, positioned to kind of attract and keep data scientists. Now, we started this initiative, uh, IADS, to bring together a lot of the communities, and we've been reaching out to the various communities and doing some of the research that you hear about, 
So data science, university and academia, training centers, recruitment agencies, business, application developers, etc. Uh, and what we've done is we've looked at three major categories of things. Number one is job titles and roles. How do we get those descriptions categorized correctly, described tightly, is, so, so they're useful? Number two is knowledge and skills requirements. And number three is how do you assess and measure? Right? And we'll talk about the first two today. Uh, we're working on three. Uh, we are out, you know, doing outreaches like this. We, talk, we come to Strata. We've spoken at many conferences. We've organized workshops about the topic. And, and that it's always been great attendance and great interest. We do have an advisory board. We've listed some of the folks on it here, uh, trying to basically get a representation across the industry, different, different uh, uh, both academia and uh, uh, industry. And our methodology has been around four big things, and Hamid will, will go into this in more detail, but literature review to kind of see what's written out there and what are things that we can really utilize. Not much really, but you'll, you'll see some of it. A lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews, which we think are important. We've done surveys, and you'll, you'll hear the result of the, some of the results of the survey uh, with large numbers. We'd love for you to take the survey. Uh, and we've done kind of analysis on LinkedIn. Um, you get a lot of definitions, right? You have the famous Conway one of the intersection of various circles. In either case, not, I found it to be not very helpful. It just says the data scientist needs to know all these things, right? Good at math, good at hacking, good at uh, domain expertise, right, et cetera. And, and this is how you quickly construct a unicorn, right? Um, we did a quick exercise in KDD uh, 2019, which happened in Alaska recently in Anchorage. We did a survey of the audience, about 200 people, and we said, how do you define data science? And we got almost 200 different definitions of data science from 200 people. So that's another, uh, if you like, uh, alarm bell. Um, what is agreed upon, though, is that the need of, for computing with data under various varied co computational constraints, et cetera, is important and is something that a lot of companies are doing. Uh, there is an implication of a set of activities that a bunch of people agree constitute data science, and we'll talk about some of those. And that data scientists are delivering against important challenges that are actually mat matter, to the co matter to companies. Not surprising, right? This is why companies are willing to pay the money. The thing that we're worried about is when companies get turned off, right? If, if you hire and waste so much time hiring and you spend so many dollars and you're hiring the wrong types, at one point the company turns around and says this whole data science thing is meaningless, right? I don't want it anymore. That's another big motivation why we want to get that cleaned up before we kind of lose the... Uh... So if you ask what's our current working definition, and by the way, this has been tough, right? Um, the definition I like today and I'm working with is data science is about solving problems by inference from data. I'll explain these terms in a second. But if you look at, I've listed the old one from DJ Patil, which is the ability to extract knowledge and insights from large and complex data sets. I didn't quite find that satisfactory to me. Uh, I looked at the one by Hal Varian, which also kind of is very lacking. It's, it's not a formal one, but he used that in several talks. Uh, Investopedia has a longer one there, right? Again, you look at them, not too satisfactory. I, I like to have something short and, and meaningful. So what do I mean by solving problems by inference from data? Well, solving problems is basically decision making or decision support, prediction. Insight extraction, reporting, explaining, confirming, refuting, exploration, discovery, optimization, right? So that's the solving problem. I might pose a problem and say, I need to understand X, right? Inference refers to the methods we use, right? Machine learning, induction, super unsupervised learning, computational <coughs> statistical modeling, pattern summary and extraction, etc. And data, well, here we mean truly data structured and unstructured, including metadata, which is where a lot of data scientists spend a lot of time trying to fix stuff. 
data representation, cleaning and transformation, collection and preparation, entity extraction, right? Some people will call it data wrangling and etc. So that is the definition I'm kind of working with these days. We are very, very open to modifying this. So that's another part is send us feedback if you have ideas of a better definition. And I've read a lot uh, of definitions and I keep reading to refresh to see whether something new came up or not. Um, so actually with this one, I'm probably gonna switch over to you or, okay. So let me, let me take this point here to switch over to Hamid, whose job is to now drill down deeper into the survey and some of the findings we found out and uh, kind of call on you for, for help, et cetera. Okay, excellent, All right. great, thanks so much. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so as Usama said, uh, you know, we, we, we've looked at multiple data sources um, to, to, to be as comprehensive and, and, and as deep as, as we can. So the literature review, Usama went through a little bit, and uh, some of these definitions, you know, the essential definitions, are gonna go into a first output, so the first report, which is, uh, you know, the current, um, you know, the, our, our current uh, effort. Um, almost, almost done, our advisory board is, uh, is reviewing it. Uh, and uh, the second report is gonna go into uh, breaking all of this down by titles and roles in the industry, right? So that's gonna be the output. The, 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 the last thing that we're gonna have in the report that you'll see is uh, what we call a body of knowledge for data science. So what this means is, uh, for, you know, uh, for example, when you look at the, uh, the Venn diagrams, it at a very broad level uh, describes uh, the kind of skills that you need, right? So hacking could mean a lot of different things. Or when it says math and science skills, what does it exactly uh, mean? So what we're doing is we're creating a, um, a, a comprehensive uh, list or a universe of all the skills and knowledge that, that anybody in the data science field, data analytics field, can be expected to know. Not a single person, but we, when you combine everybody who works in that, uh, you know, in this space, and uh, you, you know, you listed the skills that's collectively possessed, what, that, that, uh, what does that list look like? So when we say math and science, what kind of math, right? I mean, math is huge. So what is relevant to data science in the topic, uh, on, you know, in, in a, in a, in a in, you know, under the math heading, for, uh, for example? So that's going to be, uh, you know, that's going to be in our report that's going to come out shortly. Uh, what we did on LinkedIn is uh, two things. One is uh, we looked at several hundred job postings. So how, people, how companies define uh, you know, the, the various roles that they're uh, advertising. We also looked at several thousand professional profiles on LinkedIn uh, and uh, tried to, to understand not only their backgrounds, but the kind of skills that they list, uh, endorsed or uh, non-endorsed, uh, so that we can kind of compare how people uh, position themselves or, or relate their titles to their skills versus uh, what some of these uh, employers are, are doing. But the, the main effort, the big, a big effort has been a questionnaire. So uh, we sent out a questionnaire uh, to uh, uh, you know, both uh, professionals, data, science, uh, data scientists, machine learning engineers, data analysts, et cetera, and also uh, to a hiring manager or executives, so people who are employing or who are uh, managing uh, you know, uh, teams. So we asked them a bunch of things. This was a very detailed survey. We, get, uh, you know, we got 800 plus responses, uh, which is amazing for this kind of uh, an in-depth uh, you know, survey. Uh, not only we asked about um, you know, uh, some of their uh, training, hiring practices, et cetera, we also asked them very detailed questions about what kind of skills and knowledge they expect from each of the roles that exist within their organization, right? So if they, uh, if they have a data engineer, uh, in a lot of detail, what does that uh, person uh, need to know? Um, you know, uh, large employers, startups, um, you know, uh, technology companies, uh, etc. Uh, so you kind of kind of see the breakdown of um, uh, you know of the size of their analytics teams. Very quick, uh, you know, snapshots. Uh, you know, the, the, something that worries us and uh, ties back to some of the things that Osama said. A lot of the companies they list in terms of their training methods or how people educate themselves, most of them rely on either self-training or informal uh, on-the-job training, when, you know, whatever you, you, know, you make that uh, you know, to be. Uh, we asked them what kind of titles that, that exist in the organization. Data scientist was obviously a, a common one, but we got a long list. Some of them are really, really creative. Um, and uh, uh, what we're currently working on is, and this is gonna go into our uh, you know, second report, is to understand uh, 
you know, if we can come up with a definition that can be consistently applied across all of these large uh, data sets, right? So what you see here is, uh, you know, imagine uh, hundreds of, uh, you know, respondents, uh, you know, definitions of data scientists, etc. We first did a clustering of skills, if you will. So these are automatically generated, data-driven, uh, you know, uh, uh, prototypes. Think of it as almost like genres of uh, music, right? Uh, so it's not a person. So we're not saying that these are types of people, but these are types of uh, skills that we can that can be fairly neatly grouped under prototypes. It's a mixed membership model. Uh, you know, happy to share if, you know details if you uh, if you're interested. Uh, so a couple a couple highlights. So the larger the font, obviously, the more prominent that particular skill is for that prototype. So for example. Um, you know, when you look at relational databases on the, you know, kind of the lower right-hand side, SQL and uh, relational database uh, systems comes up huge. So for this prototype, that's a, that's a very critical skill. Or when you look at, uh, you know, uh, ML, uh, you know, scientists, uh, there's scripting languages for data science, uh, numerical computing, uh, you know, et cetera. So this gives us an idea of how this long list of skills can be, uh, you know, grouped. And then, of course, we matched us with the with titles. Again, work in progress. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, when you look at, for example, ML scientists, you see that ML theory. So there's a bunch of stuff under ML theory, right? Uh, so these are the prototypes uh, at the top. ML theory is the most critical skill. So when people are responding to this uh, questionnaire, they list ML theory or the skills underneath ML theory as must-haves significantly more than other titles. Right, so that's that's what's uh, important. So when you look at uh, data scientists, for example, you see basic analysis and data prep, which kind of shows that we still spend you know 80% of our time on uh, getting the data ready and cleaning and all of that. But you also see uh, MLDS developments, a uh, little bit of ML theory, uh, and uh, a lot of communication and collaboration related uh, you know skills. So our goal is to actually, uh, you know, kind of finalize this. So how actual people, actual titles are made up of in terms of these prototypes, right? Uh, but we're not going to stop there because these are averages, right? So this is for an average data scientist. But when you dig down into the data, we see that there are no average data scientists, right? So uh, when you cluster people who label themselves as data scientists, we see, for example, very distinct three profiles. So the, the first profile, so these are all data scientists in our survey, right? So the first profile um, is, you know, you, you, and you see all these prototypes, right? So in different, uh, you know, color codes. This first type of data scientist is expected to know a lot from almost, uh, you know, from a majority of these uh, different areas. So this is probably as close to a unicorn as you can get in terms of our uh, survey. So it's a long bar, right? So long bar means these people are expected, so the must-have skills, it's a long list. Whereas when you look at number three, you know, uh, yes, some skills are more important, but at the end of the day, that particular type of data scientist is expected to know a lot less. So probably, you know, as we're progressing in this direction, this is the kind of, this is where our analysis is heading, um, you know, we'll, we might be grouping this third type of data scientist under, with another group, and maybe they'll be called, or they should be called data analysts or something else, right? Uh, but calling these three types of people the same thing is definitely confusing and is probably the root, root cause of some of the, some of the uh, statistics that Usama uh, shared. So this is the direction that we're taking our analysis. As I said, it's work in progress. Uh, and our second report is actually gonna come up with uh, proposed definitions for the most common titles in the industry. So what we think, for example, an ML engineer should be expected to know in terms of specific uh, skills and knowledge. So that kind of wraps up uh, you know, my section. Um, uh, we'd love you to get involved uh, you know, if, you, if you'd like, um, you know, if, you're, if you're in the field in whatever capacity, uh, you know, share expertise, uh, you know, provide content if you, if you see one. Help us uh, create awareness. Uh, you know, if you're organizing a meetup, for, for example, you know, we'll be happy to come and uh, uh, you know, share our uh, thoughts and findings uh, you know, with you. So with that, uh, I'll open it up for Q&A if you have a few minutes. Yes, we have exactly five minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, a couple of questions, so we'll start here, yeah.
hiring a data science scientist, but setting up a data science team that has all this mix of skill sets that you would be unlikely to find in one person. If you have a team of three or four, you can very easily complement those skill sets, and it's proven to be actually more successful. Yeah. Yes, yes, and yes, I think. The short, <laughs> short answer to that. And actually, let me show you this. Uh, so here, when you look at uh, communication and collaboration, uh, I mean, you'll see that you, you know, people expect that from most of the roles, and the reason is people you know, have to work collectively or collaboratively. Uh, yes? So once all of this comes out and is published, what's the plan to push adoption um, You know, we hope to open this up for discussion, right? So this is what we think. It's based on what we think is the most comprehensive uh, you know, uh, efforts uh, you know, to date. But uh, it's going to be up for discussion. Hopefully, we'll get feedback from the community. Uh, we'll get it published, um, you know, both articles, but also in its entirety, uh, you know, the reports. Um, if uh, you know, uh, if we, if we find this is uh, you know valuable to the uh, you know to the community, then we look for, for ways to make this an ongoing effort to sustain it, to you know, to, to further it, to maintain it, because it's going to change, right? Uh, so this is not a one-time effort. You know, we stop the time here. Things are going to look different a year or two from now. So the idea would be, you know, how do we make this then a sustainable effort? Uh, there's one in the back. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Working on your lab on assembler, uh, you know, and uh, still be called a software engineer. And you know, another software engineer could have worked at high level function of lab, but even like you know, the the job posting, the capabilities of LinkedIn, uh, interview techniques are are so different. So uh, my question is, if software engineering could tolerate that, uh, and some might even yeah, no, great, great question. And the answer is <clears throat> simple. Yes, you're right. Software engineer is a big category, but there's also very well understood subcategories that are actually pretty well defined. So you'll have a back end engineer, you'll have a front end engineer, right? You'll have a DevOps engineer and so forth. And these are fairly well-defined and fairly well kind of uh, adjusted to uh, categories, right? And, then, and, and there's an understanding when somebody calls themselves full stack, you don't expect them to be as strong on the back end or as strong on the front end, right? And, and so forth. And people don't feel <clears throat> confused. If you like talk to a front end engineer, they'll tell you, yes, I'm a front end engineer and, and you know, I don't know much about the back end and it's okay. We don't have that in data, that's the problem what we don't have in data science is, can we clarify these enough for people to kind of start doing the right thing, right? And, 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 and categorizing it enough to say, yes, I belong, no, I don't belong to this category. There's one here, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, we haven't looked at it by company size or team of analytics. Uh, you know how big their analytics team is yet, but it's a it's a great point. There might be some variation, uh, but even in that case, I think it's important to know that you knowingly do that. That is, you're looking for someone that can go across maybe, but different depths, etc. As long as you know what you're doing, that you're hiring a person for a specific. Uh, you know, reason, uh, either a generalist or a specialist or, you know, whatever, then I think, you know, we're, we're out of trouble. Yes.
Ja, ja. ja. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, certificates is something that, that definitely we've looked at, you know, in terms of what exists and how those, you know, but most of them are currently tied to specific tools and technology, which is very transient, right? I mean, you know, the tools, technology can change, but a lot of the fundamentals. Um, I think uh, if there's enough uh, broad agreement around what some of these definitions are, yes, I think a certificate would be useful and could be practical. But I think first, there needs to be a little bit of uh, agreement on what those definitions, and, and, and I think you know, the efforts, uh, our effort and probably others, uh, will be driving towards that. And if we're successful, I think that could be a natural outcome. Yeah. Yes, please. One more, or are we done? OK, one more then, and then we'll, and I, I'm, I'll be here afterwards. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know if we can predict the future, but it, it is a buzzword. And what we're trying to do is kind of get ahead of it, define it well, before it kind of loses its buzz. Because we, we think there is a there there, for sure. And, and the demand is very, very high. And the gap in demand is also between supply and demand is, is, is huge. So we think if we don't define it right, it can stand a chance of kind of going through the bad after hype cycle. So hopefully we, we avoid that. But yeah. Okay, great. Thank, thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Thanks.